and welcome back to Bloomer Home and Garden. It is so good to have you back at the farmhouse with me today. If you are new here, my name is Kim and this is Bloomo Home and Garden where I do a lot of videos on homemaking, trash to treasures, DIYs, a lot of gardening. I love to share how I care for my chickens on this channel as well. So welcome. Thank you all for being here. So let's talk about today's project. Today's project is a master bedroom makeover. And I just have to share the story with you of how we got here. In true Bloomwell fashion, this project has snowballed into a giant project. Back in January, I had done a living room farmhouse makeover. And if you did not get to see that video, I will link it down below so that you can find it. And I had planned on doing the same farmhouse makeover for both our master bedroom and the upstairs bathroom. They both needed just a little extra love and I just wanted to do that at that time. Unfortunately, I had slipped a couple discs in my spine and was unable to do the task. Soon after that, the pandemic hit and we just couldn't get out to get the supplies that we needed. At the time that we discussed what I was going to do upstairs, we had already made our list of all the things that need to be done outside this year on our farm. And so we decided at that point to keep it as minimal as possible. The things that we decided to tackle was to paint the bedroom ceiling. Now our bedroom used to be an attic space and so the walls are slanted, the ceiling slanted, they meet. And when you're getting dressed you sometimes bump the walls with your hands or your hair and that oil leaves a residue and it smudges and of course it's impossible to wash off because when the house was painted before we lived here all the paint is flat paint. The next thing we talked about doing was replacing the carpet. Again, our house was bank owned and when the bank came in, they did a beautiful job of painting and laying new carpet, but it was all builder grade. And that means it was the cheapest things they could find using the space. So we knew carpet was probably only gonna last about five years and that's about the time it has lasted. We have been here five and a half years and the carpet needed to be replaced. As far as everything else, the walls were in good shape. We weren't gonna paint the walls. We weren't gonna change anything else. Maybe do some new curtains and some new bedding, but that would be the end of the project. So in January, when I was searching for that soft, creamy, neutral color that we needed to keep the consistency of the space, I did find a few things for the space. So let me show you what I found. At Home Goods. I found these beautiful canvas in a nice cream and white color scheme to our current space. And we were going to use these for new laundry hampers. Two items that go very well in this color scheme are canvas drop cloth and burlap. So I found such a frames at TJ Maxx that I thought brought out that farmhouse country vibe that were still in the neutral tones. The next thing we found were these nice comfy dog beds. Our girls are eight years old and they're slowing down and we thought they needed something very comfy and soft to lay on. So here is a very neutral suede with some white fleece. So in the perfect color scheme to match our space. So we were on a roll of finding the perfect things to fit our space. A couple weekends ago, we decided to go to the carpet store. I really asked my husband to come along because I'm not a huge fan of carpet. After raising so many children and having animals in the house and seeing what gets ground into the carpet and accidents happen, I just really feel like carpets really aren't a clean thing. And so I'm not a huge fan of carpeting. My husband, on the other hand, loves a good wall-to-wall -wall carpet. When we purchased our home, we compromised. There was carpet all through the house, wall-to-wall, -wall, except from the kitchens and the bathrooms. And we made a deal that I'd rip up all the carpets on the lower level and have area rugs that could be easily cleaned and maintained. And we would keep the wall-to-wall -wall carpet on the upper level. And I have to agree with him. We live in an 1860s farmhouse in the country and the winters here are really cold and it is very nice to step out of a warm bed onto a soft warm carpet in the middle of winter. He likes carpet more than I do. He is more of a carpet expert and so I thought he should be there to decide what loop I needed to get and thickness and padding and all things related to carpet. 
We took a sample of the carpet that we have and the padding so they could see what we have, the color that we had so we could match it as close as possible. Off we went to the carpet store. Five minutes in, he chooses this. Do you see this? And while at quick glance, it's not too bad, it doesn't match anything. This means that all the walls and the furniture need to change. And to be honest, I really don't have a game plan. I'm gonna kind of wing it as we go. Picked a few shades of paint that I thought would go well with this. Just gonna see how it looks. As far as what's staying and what's going, I'm not real sure on that either. So you're gonna have to come along with us and see what the outcome is. Just for practical purposes and making it a simple project so we don't have to try to carry out this gigantic piece of carpet and find a place to put all the other furniture when the carpet is coming out of those rooms as well, it just made sense to just kind of move it around the room that we can keep some things practical, useful, and close by while we're in the middle of this renovation. But for those of you who don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you may be in for a treat because most of our floors look terrible. That is no joke, my friends. If you follow me on Instagram, you remember the message I found written on the floor downstairs. And when I redid the hallway floor just last week we ripped up the hallway carpet and saw that the floor was the same as it was downstairs and what a terrible mess it was and i went ahead and just painted it even though we are going over it with carpet i just 
couldn't lay carpet over the mess that the floors were and I'm guessing that this floor is going to be the same. I'm not sure it would be great to uncover a beautiful floor, but I'm not sure that's going to happen based on what we found on every floor so far. So for those of you who haven't followed before, don't be shocked when we pull back the carpet. So here we are. We're just going to jump in and start cutting the carpet. Like I said, we're just going to do this in sections. So we're cutting along each side and I'm very nervous and I'm very excited to see what is under this carpet and see what exactly these floors look like. at these floors. I don't know if it shows up but it's kind of a gray paint. It's not the horrible barn red that's downstairs and in the hallway and on the steps. But they did leave paint everywhere. Here's an example of how they just rolled their rollers on the floor. And this is so beautiful. And don't say a word to him but if I had my way Oh boy, I would just love it. These floors are in such great shape and it's the original plank wood. Oh my goodness, I love them. Aren't they just gorgeous? But a deal is a deal and I will carry on. I would be excited to step out of the bed into some soft carpeting. Now we are also replacing the padding. This is just really really inexpensive padding and for the longevity and the support of your carpet it's best to if you can afford it definitely upgrade your padding and so we did upgrade a little bit with our padding just so that our carpet felt even better and it helped warm our space and keep our floors nice and warm in the winter time. So the first paint color I chose for the space was called Winter's Dawn. Now we have Winter's Morning or Morn carpeting and the paint is Winter Dawn. Now I get so excited when it's time to start rolling. Anyone else, do you just feel so satisfied to be able to start rolling? Cutting in is definitely not my favorite and it takes so long, but when I can get to rolling, I know that we're on a roll and I love it. Now the first coat is on the wall and I stepped back and I looked at it and it really looks pink to me or lavender and pink lavender I'm not sure and I tried it in many different lights and this was not the color we were going for so I went ahead and went back to Lowe's and just grabbed the Valspar 2000 ultra white and started over
here you can see that the white definitely is brighter and whiter than the pink and you can really see the pink undertones and although we really didn't think the beige walls needed it this really brightened up those walls and I really like how this white is covering very glad that we ended up going with this white And now we bring you date night renovation style. How many of you have been in the middle of the renovation and it's Friday night and what are you going to do? So we sat out to paint our nightstands. We put a good Halloween flick on for Netflix to watch and we had some wine. It was a great time. And now we're going to change up the color. We are going to go with the soulful gray. And this is another color that I have throughout the house and it just kind of brings everything together, ties it together. So I'm gonna put this here on the accent wall and then I'm also going to bring this around and add more of this throughout the room, just so we have a little variation and it's not just stark white. Mm -hmm. I also brought this color around to the closet wall, it's part of the entrance wall where you first come in, and then I went ahead and carried this over to around the door and the final back wall of our room. And it makes for a really nice contrast with the white and it really brings out the colors of the carpet. I think you're going to like it. For the dressers, like I said when I started the video, I didn't have a plan. We were just winging it. I didn't know what to do with the dressers. I kind of wanted to paint them white. I really wanted that farmhouse white look, but a bedroom should be quiet, calm, and relaxing. And I decided that, sure, let's try black. If we don't like it, we can always paint over it. 
and we went with black on all the dressers and I think I really like it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you like the black dressers or would you would have went with white or would you have done a stain or a colored stain? Let me know. is a carpet stretcher tool that we rented from our carpet store and they are really valuable it really helps get it up along the baseboard and then you can see here look at the amount of stretch that you get by using this and what this does is just pulls your carpet nice and taut you won't have those wrinkles in it or binding anywhere and it helps your carpet to lay flatter and wear better so this is a really valuable tool and we are really glad that we used it and you can just see here how nice and flat the carpet is and just how lovely this carpet is in this room in this space it really does make a huge difference and you can see here the up close colors from a distance it looks kind of silver but up close you do have all those different colors of the black the gray the white just speckled throughout it's just gorgeous And you know I am the queen of faux shiplap and here I go with my faux shiplap. Now this is just a piece of cardboard that I cut to the height that I wanted it to be. I am going with a six inch board or space between my, my shiplaps. And I chose cardboard because at this point I was doing it by myself and it was easier to flex and move. But soon I got some help and we did it. It's always easier to do this together. But if you have to do it by yourself, using a level helps. And I'm using just my chiseled Sharpie pen. And I'm going back and forth. You really want this to not be perfect. That is a good tip I can give you. Because the older the shiplap gets, the, the spacing, it's old, it's not perfect. And that really makes it look better. Now there is one little spot here up above the window that I do go back and fix. You'll see in part two that I did fix that. and But the rest of it just turned out perfect. And it really looks like it's an original shiplap wall in an old attic.
Okay, friends, this is where I leave you. I hope you've enjoyed this part one of the video. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss part two. In part two, I'm going to show you what we used for a headboard, how I did that, and you'll get to see the room be brought back together and just how it all turned out. So meet me back here for part two. Until next time, be blessed, be safe, and I'll see you soon.